Hey, so I haven't done an update for a while, so uh, how about an update? Um, so the last couple of weeks have been, uh, shall we say, frustrating. <laughs> uh, some of these machines, they sat um, a little bit longer than we expected because of the pandemic. They sat in, uh, they sat in the shipping container, they sat in the workshop, and um, so as a result, um, they had some issues. <laughs> um, yeah, so the last um, couple of uh, couple of weeks have been basically. I guess I'm a little dark. Let me let me come over here where I'm a little bit lighter. Um, last couple of weeks have been basically chasing problems. So I had brought as an example. I had brought um, uh, Joker Poker in, and Joker Poker. Uh, I got it set up and it worked just fine and I played a couple games on it and then it completely stopped working. And um, so then it was a bit of troubleshooting, trying to figure out, okay, why are you not working? Um, I took the boards out, I reflowed uh, solder connections, uh, you know, where the two boards kind of clamp together. That's usually a point of failure. So I did that, I repinned a whole bunch of things. I couldn't get the dumb thing going. Um, uh, the, the power seemed fine at first, and then uh, when I rechecked the power last, it looks like the power supply now needs to be rebuilt. So I'm kind of running into a lot of little quirky little things like that where the, the game fires up at first, and you play a couple games, everything looks fine, and then it just has an issue. And uh, So as a result, what I ended up doing is um, I, I just pulled some of those games. Um, I didn't want a whole bunch of machines in here that were dead that um, I didn't have a good solution for fixing them. So I have um, like Medusa back there, it's dark. Um, it, it was one of the ones that fired right up and everything. Um, but it's, it's, then it stopped working. That one is definitely the power supply. So for that one, I just decided, you know what, I'm just gonna order a new power supply. The, the rectifier board. I'm just going to order a new one because the other one that's in there is a rotten dog and it has some traces that are kind of burned out. I think it's salvageable, but I don't want to dick around with it. <laughs> Not right now. So I'll put in the new one and then uh, when I have a little bit more time, then I'll take the rotten dog one and I can put some jumpers in and, and get that one working and get that one all figured out. I think actually the bridge rectifier needs to be replaced and everything. Um, but they're, they're simple items. Uh, there's not a whole lot going on on them. Um, so I, they're pretty straightforward to, re, to fix. But uh, right now, since I'm kind of under the gun on opening, um, I have to order all the parts. And so you have to go to the website to order the parts and you have to dig around. I, I, I use, usually use DigiKey. Uh, and I think Moser is similar where you you put in the specifications of what you're looking for and then they end up with you end up with like 50 returns of like here's all the things and you have to dig through it takes a while to order that stuff um so that's sort of the plan for some of them is is if i can get a replacement board i'll just get it i'll replace it and then the one that's dead i will repair that one when i have more time and then i'll have spares <laughs> um yeah, so uh, Pinbot needs a new display. I should have that on Friday. Um, lethal Weapon, the power supply for the display is wonky, so I have a replacement coming in. Motor Dome actually has one of the, the, the flipper Powells is cracked, so the flipper sticks, so that needs to be replaced. I have a bunch of those coming in. Um, what else is going on? Um, I think that's the the bulk of the major problems. Um, Batman uh, is kind of being a little flaky, um, but I think that that's all cable related. Secret Service, uh, it it kind of worked at startup, but, but the one of the flippers was sticking a little bit. Um, and then I opened it up and the, the flipper coil basically ate itself. It melted. The and a stroke switch and the, the relays they had all melted and stuff. So that that's going to need a little bit of work, but I have replacement parts for that. I had fired up um, 
I don't know if I said it in another one. I brought in Jeannie. Um, I had gotten that one right around the time that I was moving. And I couldn't remember if it worked um, when I when I bought it. So I thought that it worked. <laughs> so I, I brought it in thinking that it, it had an 85% chance of working. Um, but then it didn't work at all. <laughs> but I had sort of anticipated that, so I had I had gotten knee wump boards for basically I could I could replace everything in it if I needed to, and then um, like I was saying before, and then troubleshoot like if the driver board has a problem or something, then uh, I'll just pop a new one in there and then go through the driver board later and swap out what needs to be swapped out. And then I have spares, which is, I think, important to have is spares um, in a situation like this. Because then six months from now, if if I have a, a System 80 machine or a System 1 machine that has some sort of glitch, instead of standing there troubleshooting it quickly and trying to cycle through it very, very quickly, um, I can just pop in the new board and then or the replacement board and then troubleshoot the problem one at a more convenient time. So, um, so Jeannie, uh, I'm just waiting on, um, our rectifier board for that one, a power supply for that one as well. Um, and then after that, it should be pretty straightforward to get going. Um, interesting thing with time zone and nip it actually. So time zone, was working fine but now it's doing this really interesting thing where when it, there's two saucers at the top and the ball lands in one of those saucers and it starts to cycle some points but the the saucer relay stack doesn't engage um it doesn't engage long enough to kick the ball out so it just sits there and kind of cycles and adds points it's great if you want to get the high score but it sucks if you actually want to play the game um, so that is probably, uh, a problem that I had that was similar to, uh, supersonic where it was kind of doing the same thing. It just wasn't, uh, kicking the ball out. And once I found the right series of switches and I cleaned those switches, that problem stopped. So that's what I need to do for time zone. And I think that that one will fire right up. Uh, other than that, it's working great. Uh, other than being broken, it's working swell. <laughs> uh, Nippet was funny is I, uh, I didn't, I, I believe that it was working more or less fine when I bought it uh, because the guy that I bought it from, I, I bought several machines from him and he gets them up and going because he was going to sell it to me. He gets those up and going uh, well enough that basically everything works. But maybe he won't clean the play field and do all of that because he knows that I like doing all of that business. So I got it in here and it, if I remember, it fired right up, but the back glass lights were out. Oh, it might have had some other glitchy little weird problem, weirdness. But uh, so I, I started trying to figure out why the back glass lights were out. And for some reason, I didn't even check the fuse to begin with. <laughs> I just started looking for, you know, maybe it's a Jones plug problem or something to that extent. Something simple like that. But a fuse is usually pretty simpler. It's a more simpler did Whatever the word is, just pretend I said it. Um, so I looked in and sure enough, the, the fuse had popped. So I put a new fuse in there and uh, it just heated right up and popped again. Well, that's kind of weird. So I tried to figure out where the short was and couldn't couldn't determine where the short was until I got out my secret weapon. So a friend of mine, this is this is a pinball repair, EM pinball repair tip number 368. Um, a friend of mine's an electrician. You've you've seen him on uh, some of the I suck at pinballs, Jason. So he has this uh, really, really nice FLIR camera that he uses for work. And he's used that to find shorts on pinball machines. So I thought, damn, that's a, that's a clever, clever idea. 
So I waited for just kind of a basic cheap one to go on sale. Uh, I'll actually grab it. It's right over here. Um, it's just uh, one of these little guys, nothing special. Um, and I think I got it for 180 bucks or something on sale. I don't, it, it wasn't very much considering what it can do. So I let it, I let the machine cool down and then I uh, uh, put a brand new fuse in it and I fired it up and I waited for it to short out and it shorted out pretty much straight away. And then I used the FLIR camera and I just followed the heat of the wires to the short. And it was actually a pretty simple problem. It was one of the, the lights um, the, that the back lights were, it says quarters. It was one of those, the, the holder was just mashed and the wires were shorting together. I went clip, clip, got rid of it, no problem. Uh, then it wouldn't start a game. It wouldn't, it would just sit and cycle like it hadn't done that before. So I dug around in there a little bit more. One of the coin shoot um, uh, switch stacks is, is gone and those wires had been joined together. And uh, really at the end of the day, it was just those, the, when I was looking for the short, I had kind of uncovered those and, and they were touching enough that it was causing the problem. So, but it, it's been sort of things like that where I come in and I have, let's, let's say just as a for instance, I have 20 machines up and running and I have three that I want to work on. So you, you start working on one of them and then you have like a little minor problem with one of the machines that's working and you kind of sit down and you start working at it. And then when you leave, you end up with 19 machines working. <laughs> Something weird happens. Like Nippet was more or less working except for the, the back glass lights were out. And then by the time I was finished with it that day, it was just sitting there cycling and it wasn't, uh, I didn't find the problem until a day or two later. And, and it was really getting frustrating there for a while because you come in and you're like, oh, I want to, I want to jam through a bunch of machines and get them all fixed up. And then you leave and you basically accomplish nothing. <laughs> so it's been a little frustrating. Uh, yesterday I came in and I worked on, um, I fixed Nippet. I fixed a little glitch with Volley. I, uh, uh, fixed. What else did I do? There was uh, triple action wasn't working at all. I got that one up and running and working. Needs to be cleaned up. That one's going to clean up. Uh, let me turn around so you can see it. It's uh, this one. Uh, that one's actually going to clean up really nicely um, once I get into the play field. And score reels need to be uh, uh, cleaned up and touched up because the the paint is kind of falling off the numbers, but. I think this one's going to look really nice when it's finished. And then I had a problem with, um, which one? There was one other one. Oh, Supersonic was, was being a little butthead. I've been in and fixed that one a couple of times and it's the, it's the, the saucer when it lands in the, the little saucer up there, it doesn't kick it out. And, um, I've adjusted and cleaned a bunch of switch stacks over and over and over again, trying to, it'll work for a short time and then it will start um, exhibiting the same problems. And, and it was actually, uh, I was doing a, a particular s s two switch stacks. And then when I finally solved the problem, it was on the, on the, the score reel, um, not the score reel, but the, 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 re the big reset wheel with the motor on it. There was one switch stack in there, one switch. Once I cleaned that up, it the problem went away. So um, one thing that I found working on these EMs is that uh, you can tone out the wire, um, put, the, put a, a probe on one end of whatever it is you're trying to solve. And then if you think it's going on the particular switch stack, then you can you can tone out the wire that way and figure out what exact leaf switch is where what needs to be cleaned or adjusted. And then one thing that I've noticed also that is interesting is that um, I never noticed this before. Maybe this is like an old thing that everybody knows about, but if a switch stack needs to be, or if switch needs to be cleaned, 
usually it sparks more than it should. <laughs> I've, I've noticed that more and more on, since I've, I've really been working. I've had my head in these EM machines a lot. Um, I never really made that connection before, but um, I've, I've sort of noticed that more and more. So, yeah. Uh, so I don't know how many machines we have up and going in here right now, um, but I'm expecting a shipment of parts um, on Friday, and um, I should have the majority of everything up and running by then. We're waiting on one little thing, um, a, a back-end business type thing that we need to take care of first before we can officially open. Um, We've, we've had a lot of kind of setbacks and delays and, and things and um, I really wanted to be open a month ago <laughs> but you know what, what are you gonna do it is what it is um, uh, the the nice thing is is that I've got um, the majority of, of my problem machines are solved um, I did um, like I pulled out alien poker and replaced it with hard body <laughs> and uh, it, it'll be nice now that I can um, I, I have the, the, the base set machines up and going and then I can actually the next machine that I bring in I can work on it at home here it was sort of like we need to get all these machines in and then we can just troubleshoot them in the space and that was probably harder than if I had a little bit more time and I had just um, fired them up at home and went okay this one works take it this one works take it this one has a problem set it aside this one works take it kind of go through it that way um, so I do want to work on uh, the next ones that I think I'm gonna bring in are gonna be either Volcano or um, the James Bond 007. I want, I, I need more big old wide bodies in here. Uh, once I get Genie up, that's great. But it would be nice to have one or two others. And James Bond 007 is a little funky because it's based on um, time and not, uh, you know, amount of balls that you play. It's, it doesn't start with three balls or five balls or whatever. It starts with a certain amount of time. You have to stop the time and earn time and whatever. I think that's kind of a cool gimmick. And um, uh, Volcano is just a big wacky machine, right? It's a lot of fun. That one was having some glitchy little problems, so I want to make sure that I don't want to bring that glitchy little problem in here. Uh, so I want to make sure that that's working before I bring it in. Uh, the other machine that I want to work on and bring in next is probably going to be Disco Fever. And I don't know the, the condition of the one that I have, I, the play field I think is okay. The backlash is actually really good. Um, but I don't remember the condition of the boards or anything like that. Um, so that that's, I want it because it has the banana flippers, which are just bizarre and weird. <laughs> and I, you know, it's all about the gimmicks for me. It's, it's making sure that I have like all these different gimmicks. And then one of the things that I want to do in here is um, have a sheet of paper that I can give new pinball players that just is basically a, a gimmick hunt. You know, find the one with roto targets, find the one with banana flippers, find the one that uh, has a roulette wheel in the play field and try all of those. And it gives them sort of a, um, something to, to uh, go out and try different machines instead of just like, I'll play a machine, but where do I start kind of thing. I think that would be kind of a fun thing to have and maybe have like 10 different, 10 or 11, 15 different gimmicks on this sheet of paper. Um, I also have uh, this screen up here. These screens, I have uh, uh, different slides that show up and some of them are the rules, but I also want to have like gimmick hunt up there too, where, you know, gimmick hunt, hunt number four, find the roto target or uh, find the ridiculously large pinball machine like Genie or something. Um, so we did today. We had uh, we had our our um, our first birthday party. <laughs> it was a kid turning eleven. Uh, it was him and like six or seven friends or something like that, all around the same age. So the interesting thing about that is that I don't think, except for the kid who had the birthday here, he had come. Him and his his uh, parents had come to the open house. 
so he had played pinball before just that one time and he he, he took to it pretty well but his friends hadn't so there was sort of this learning curve for them of you know how do you start a game and and how do you how do you work the flippers and all of that so the first thing that i did is i i basically showed them all like this is how you start one player game <laughs> don't just hit this button a whole bunch of time and run away right <laughs> and they all they all caught on to that pretty quickly and then they they figured out the the flippers and uh some of them did the the double flipper thing where they're flipping them both at the same time but not for very long they all sort of had gotten into it um and they were doing individual flippers and stuff a couple of kids were going around playing uh, one one kid on the right flipper, the other on the left flipper. I think they might have been brothers. I'm not sure. So the interesting thing that I thought that as I was watching them play, they were here for a couple hours. The the games like Royal Rumble, Tales from the Crypt, uh, Starship Troopers, Batman, the DMD games, I found a lot of uh, waiting to shoot ball two on those games. <clears throat> I, I think maybe it was just sort of a complexity thing. You, younger kids don't have a lot of experience with the pinball, so they go to one of these games that's very covered in flashy lights and very complex and, and the play field's very busy. They shoot the ball and I think that they're just a little overwhelmed. The, the most played game in here uh, today was probably um, Speakeasy. When they learned about the add a ball and subtract a ball feature on, on the roulette wheel in the play field, they, there was a crowd, for the last hour that they were here, there was a crowd of two or, kid, two or three kids at this machine pretty much uh, that last hour. And then I showed them how to do a multi-ball or a multiplayer game. So then there were two kids playing here and that little competition started. And uh, But it was funny, every time the roulette wheel started spinning, they're kind of, add a ball, add a ball, they're like chanting. It's kind of cute. Um, Nippet got a lot of play from them. Volley got a lot of play and Spectrum got a lot of play. Spectrum actually got played probably the second most that I saw, um, which is maybe because it's a fairly open play field it's not super overly complex but it's kind of wacky and weird and then the other one I, I did ask them what their favorite one was a lot of them said um, speakeasy but then another guy said uh, he really liked big guns and he really liked break shot but break shot was his favorite um, I saw a lot of people play Mars Trek and supersonic um, not a lot of kids playing hard body or pinbot um, uh, they did they did play a little bit of uh, Tales from the Crypt and Roller Games or something, but Dragon they played, Triple Action they played. I, it was interesting that it was it was more EMs, and I think it I think it kind of boiled down to complexity. It's 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 easy to start a game. It's easy to to figure out the ball isn't flying around the playfield super flat super fast. It's it's. Uh, uh, good for beginners, I think. So I think that that's why they played most of those. And I think that they kind of like the mechanic of it. Um, I I opened up one of the machines and showed them the inside and they were just like, whoa, crazy. So I, I think maybe just the novelty of this mechanical device was, was I think they found that sort of uh, attractive as well over the, the ones with the big displays and stuff. But... Yeah, so uh, I guess the other thing is I got I got more lava lamps up. You can see them up there. We've got some of our drinks in. And so I have the lava lamps up here on the ridge up there. Um, Disco Party has been, I don't know if you want to call it improved, um, but it's more hectic. <laughs> mm. Yep, so uh, there you go. I think that that's all that I have to say. Uh, I'm really hoping that we're open um, this coming weekend. So uh, we just got a couple of little things on the back end that we need to finalize. But other than that, um, we're, we're basically ready to go.
except for those things. So, um, yeah, now it's just uh, doing a couple of little minor repairs on the machines that are in here, uh, seeing if I can get time zone uh, figured out. And uh, then Friday I'll be busy putting in parts and getting the rest of them up and going and then dragging in some new ones. So I think that that's, I've talked long enough. <laughs> I think that's it. So uh, thanks for watching.